Hey everybody, welcome to week six. We made it. This is our final week of STEM camp. And because you've learned so much over the past five weeks, we're gonna now do a full week of STEM challenges where I'm going to give you a challenge and you're gonna use the materials in your home to make it happen. With your challenge, you'll have a lot of creativity and insight and you get to use your own problem solving skills to figure out how to make it work. I'll give you a few tips but really, it's up to you to make it happen. That's why it's a STEM challenge. Today's challenge will be to build the strongest bridge you can out of paper. But first, before we get to the challenge, let's learn about a few popular bridge designs that might inspire you to make your best bridge. The three most popular bridge designs are beam, arch, and suspension. Which design is best? Well, it depends on the distance of travel, the amount of weight it's gonna to need to hold, and the area it will be built in. Let's start with arch bridges. Objects found in nature inspire how humans use design. A rainbow's curved shape may have inspired the Romans' first arch bridges. Arch bridges have a curved shape to, to move the downward force across the entire bridge, rather than just pushing down on one spot. Besides being very strong, Arch bridges allow for tall objects like trucks or trains or boats to travel underneath. Number two is beam bridges. Beam bridges are simple in design and not very expensive to build. Beam bridges are flat bridges that connect one road to another. This bridge is often used when one road crosses on top of another road. They're often short, but longer beam bridges can be made from many small pieces connected together. Beam bridges are also used where the ground underneath is not strong enough for a road. And number three is suspension bridges. Suspension bridges hang in midair by lightweight cables high over the water or ground. The first suspension bridges were built in areas where people traveled on foot to cross large streams and canyons. Cables were constructed with tree vines and pieces of wood for steps. But modern day suspension bridges can cover a distance of 2,000 to 7,000 feet. They're the best option for long distances. However, they are expensive to build. Designing a bridge takes a team of experts. Next time you're in a car, keep your eye out for people alongside the road looking out through a tool which resembles a camera with three tall legs. These people are land surveyors who measure the ground. Surveyors work with aerial photographers who take pictures from the sky. Together, they make special maps showing the space with a soon-to-be bridge. Soil engineers test the ground for its strength to know where to put each piece of the bridge. Architects draw plans and make mini models. Environmentalists make sure the animals and plants living there are not hurt. An expert in traffic safety researches past car accidents to decide a safe route for traffic to move. The bridge design depends on the knowledge of many, many people to make the very best bridge. So just to recap, the three most popular styles of bridges are arch, beam, and suspension. And the type of bridge that an engineer builds depends on many different factors like the distance traveled and the conditions of the ground or if there's water underneath and things like that. Also, it takes a whole team of experts to make a whole bridge. It's not just one person's job. It belongs to many different people. All right, at home, you are going to build the strongest bridge that you can out of paper. Now, it can be paper like this, or it can be newspaper, or whatever type of paper you have at home is fine. Don't use cardboard, though. Use paper. You'll test the strength of your bridge with coins, okay? You're going to rest the coins one at a time on top of the bridge, and you'll see how many can hold until it collapses. But we can't just take your word for it. You're going to have to take a picture of it with a bunch of coins on it to prove how many you can actually hold. For materials, you don't need much. You, you can use as much paper as you want, and then other than that, you're probably going to want some scissors, some tape. You'll definitely want your coins, and then you'll probably want something to rest your bridge on, like two books, because your bridge will have to span the divide, right? And you'll have to put your coins over the space in the middle between the divide. If you want to make it really hard on yourself, you can use two chairs of equal height instead of the books. 
Now you can do a lot with paper, right? You can roll it. You can, you can fold it. And you can make the folds as tight as you want, as small or as wide as you want. You can crumple it and twist it. You can make shapes out of it. Triangles are especially strong shapes. The way that you manipulate the paper, fold it, twist it, whatever you do to it, is going to have an effect on its strength and how strong your bridge is altogether. And you can use as much paper as you want, as much tape as you want. You can put on as many coins as you want. It's really up to you. Just make sure that you prove to us how strong your bridge actually is. And when you put the coins on, you're going to put them in the space between the whatever's holding it, whether it's the books or the chairs. And you just keep putting them on and see how many it can hold until it collapses. Again, take as much time as you need. Use whatever design you feel works best for you. And then when you're finished, show us how strong your bridge is. That's your first STEM challenge of the week. Have fun. Here are some ideas for you. Look at these pictures. Maybe they will inspire you.